John chapter 21. Now Dave said your service runs till one. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> I won't be sharing all that long. Of course, it's been a year since I got to preach, so I've got a year's worth of stuff saved up. I tell you what, I've, been, I've just been waiting to let loose. So, John chapter 21. Verses 1 through 7, it's the story of Jesus asking the disciples, had they caught any fish? And they said, no. And he said, let down your nets on the other side. Let's read it. It says, verse, beginning with verse 21, later Jesus appeared again to the disciples besides the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We will too, they all said. And they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, the disciples saw Jesus standing on the beach, but they couldn't see who he was. And he called out friends, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat, or the other side of the boat, and you will have plenty of fish. So they did, and they couldn't draw on the net because there were so many fish in there. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you today for your word. We thank you for the wisdom and the guidance and the instruction there from you. And we just want our lives to be enriched. We want to grow closer to you. We want to understand how to live and walk before you. We pray your blessing. Lord, I pray for David and Jerry that God will just uh, enrich their lives even this morning. Pour into them. Let them come back refreshed, strengthened, renewed in vision, Lord Jesus. And we just pray for this community that God, your spirit, that Father, you will send the fire. Send the fire, Lord Jesus. Send the fire, God, I pray, from valley to point to valley point. And that God, you will fill this valley with your Holy Spirit. The power of your Holy Spirit bringing conviction, convincing of righteousness, and that Lord, even now, people will begin to seek after you. We pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Letting down your nets. Most of you say, well, that's, that's something I'll never have to think about. This just doesn't apply to me. I'm not a fisherman. I don't like to fish. I don't care if I ever go out in the boat, and certainly you'll never catch me fishing all night. <laughs> so a lot of us look at the verse like this and we say, this just doesn't apply. It must apply to somebody else because it doesn't quite apply to me. The question is, then why did God include it in the scripture? He did because it applies to all of us. You see, they're all, they're, all of us at times have to learn. It's like uh, Joseph was saying, that uh, you do things one certain way, and all of a sudden, you begin to learn to do something a total different way. And that's exactly what is going on in this story here. You know, we, we look at it, and, and a lot of times as we look at it, uh, you know, we might think it doesn't apply, but it does apply because all of us at times have to learn to move with God. And a part of that moving with God is to be a risk taker. Now a little background to this story. Number one, it is, it is a story that takes place. It's, it's post the ministry of Jesus. The disciples have watched Jesus for three years perform miracles and do mighty things. Wondrous things. Things too wondrous to even speak about. As a matter of fact, some of the things that Jesus did aren't even recorded here. Because the word says if it, there was to be a record of all the things Jesus did, there would not be enough books to contain it. All that Jesus did and continues to do. What an awesome God that we serve. So for three years they traveled, they witnessed and watched what Jesus did. This story is also to it is post Calvary. They watched Jesus carry the cross. They watched his bloody 
and wounded and broken body, hung on a cross. And it is also post-resurrection. All those things happened. His ministry happened, Calvary happened, and the resurrection happened. And, and they, they witnessed, they watched Jesus, and now here they are in life, and they're kind of, at that point, I'm sure a lot of questions. And Peter says, I'm going fishing. I'm not sure what's going to happen now. It was a fun ride. We saw some great things, but hey, let's get real. Let's go back to it. And the only thing I know to do is go back to fishing. And so they, the, the rest of them said, we will go, we'll go too. And they all got in the boat and they went out and, and uh, they, it says there they fished all night. But they caught nothing. You know, I, I think for that uh, Peter and all of them, I think throughout the night, you know, I think they tried every trick they knew. I think they tried, you know, you know, it's like us as we go out and let's say we're all out fishing, we'll say, well, that shiny jig didn't work, we'll switch to yellow or we'll switch to green or we'll switch to fluorescent. We'll switch to minnows. We'll flish, switch to leeches, you know. And we'll, we'll do this. And we'll go to that spot. And we'll go here and there. Just like when we go hunting. We, we try this and we try that, you know, for success. And I'm sure that's exactly what Peter and the disciples did. They drew upon everything they knew and understood. They tried it all. All night long, you know. And I'm sure suggestions were coming along. And, you know, someone said, well, maybe we should try this. Or let's, let's go over here. Let's, let's go do this. And I'm sure for all night long they just kept trying and trying and trying. And as dawn started to break, they still had not caught one little fish. And there's somebody on the shore that says, Friends, have you caught any fish? And they kind of looked at one another and said, I wonder what his angle is. What joke's going to come out of this? What butt of jokes are we going to be made of? And what talk is going to spread through town? And we, we could not catch any fish. And he said no. And he throws out the idea. Take your neck from this side. And I'm sure that at first they kind of looked at each other. Is, he is Is he messing with us? Because if he is, it says, but nevertheless, it says they, they took the net and they threw it down and they began to pull it in. It contained so much fish they couldn't even pull it in. And all of a sudden, one of the disciples turns to Peter and says, It is the Lord, because if you remember, this is not the first time this happened. This happened way back in Luke chapter 5, when Jesus called the disciples. They had been, a, they, they were, remember, mending their nets on the shore, and Jesus got up and pushed the boats out a little farther, and it says they had not caught fish to that day. And then Jesus said, Go ahead and throw it out. And they threw it out, and the same thing happened. And all of a sudden, John has a revelation. And it says, it is the Lord. And with that, Peter took his cloak, girded around himself, and dived into the water because he wanted to get to Jesus. How does this story apply to us? How does it apply to our situation? Well, I know I've, I've wrestled with this in my own life. You want to have things thrown at you and try to learn something different. For 30 plus years, I ministered in churches with buildings and programs and people and finances. And all of a sudden, God says, I've got a little job I want you to do. With that, he takes us out of our whole comfort zone and throws us in a little town called Bill Plain. Throw out all the things you know about ministry. It's like on a college campus. 
suddenly the, the campus domain becomes a sanctuary where the ministry of God is going to take place. I was talking with a pastor yesterday. He, uh, he's in Hutchinson, Kansas. We're going down to see him next week. And he's in an inner city church. And he says, uh, he's, talk, he's got a church. And he started talking about his Burger King church. He's got a Burger King church. Because that's where he meets people down there. And he's got a church over here. Well, the same thing happens to a church planner. Because <coughs> everything you learned about ministry suddenly changes because you don't have the programs to plug people into. You don't have the building. <coughs> everything suddenly you are learning. And at the words of Jesus, you're learning to let down your net on the other side. Oh.
And as a matter of fact, we started a Bible study and we started out with the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, and God created the world. And all, as we're going through it, all of a sudden, one of them, who we thought had a little bit of Bible knowledge, he says, you know, he says, I've heard about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but he must have a life somewhere. <laughs> okay, that's how dysfunctional they are. But we're excited because we're watching what God's doing in their lives. And people come in and people come out. You know, it, it, is, it has been a part of us. What we're learning is that we have to learn to let down our nets because we have to do things totally different. And a part of that is, is being willing to, to take a risk. You see, the message stays the same, but one of the things that is happening for us is that we're having to take steps in faith to do things differently. And you might have the same thing that God is asking you, and I want to ask you this question before we go on. What steps might God be asking you to take that involve risk? Some samples, some things that God could be asking you to do different could be, well, it could be something simple, like uh, your prayer life, your devotional life. Maybe it's in your finances, God is asking you to take some risk. Maybe it's something deeper that God is asking you to change. Maybe it's a career. Maybe it's a life choice. Maybe it is the whole way you respond to life and its situations. I don't know. But along the way, you're having to learn. As you learn to let down your net, you're learning to let go and leave the next step, that is the result, up to, to God. Again, we've had to learn to throw some things out. I wanted you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 28. One of my favorite verses, Isaiah 28.
But if we'll hear at times the words of God, God says, listen, let down your net on the other side. Because God wants us to take a risk and do it differently this time. It might be again in your finances, but it might be into how you react. Let's say, uh, oh, I, I can't think of a situation, and uh, I had one before, but I'm not, uh, I can't think of it now. But God at times wants us to do things differently because He has uh, different ways of reaching different types of people. And uh, we need to learn that at, at two in our lives, is that God gives wisdom. I just want to ask you, and I'm going to close, in what steps of faith is God asking you to let down your net on the other side of the boat? Let me close with this pledge. I found it, I like it, and I want to use it in my life. This personal pledge, as God directs, I pledge to live a more spiritually adventurous life by His grace and to take a sanctified risk for His glory. Let me say that again. As God directs, I want to take a more adventurous, spiritually adventurous life. Also, by His grace, and to take sanctified risk for His glory. In what ways is God asking you to take a risk? What changes might He be asking you to do in your life? You may be fishing on this side, but you're not catching anything. You may be doing things a certain way and things just aren't changing. Maybe it's time to hear the voice of God and say, you know, I think you should do it this way. Maybe it's how you react to your husband. Maybe it's how you react to your spouse or at work. You've been doing it this way your whole time. But you're not getting the results you want. Maybe you might hear the voice of God saying, listen, Let's try it this way. And maybe the spiritually adventurous would be to change. You'd be a risk taker. Do what God wants. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe you've been running your finances forever a certain way. And God says, you know, 5%, that's not bad, but we want to bump it up a little bit. <laughs> Go a little deeper. God may be saying, let's do it this way. Maybe you're in a job in a certain situation and you're enjoying it and God's doing good, but somewhere in your heart, God's been talking to you and He says, you know what? I, I, want, I want change. And He says, I want you to take the net on this side and throw it over here. You know, the blessing is is that it would be just like the disciples. Is that as they did that, as they let down the cup in it, and he put it on the other side of the boat, the blessing was as they caught so many fish, the net was breaking. I don't know about you, but that's where I want to live. I don't want to live in a, in a life where I fish all night and I don't catch it. That's where I want to live. And a lot of us have to say that's where we do live. But I don't want to live that way. I want to live hearing His voice, being adventurous enough to take some risks and say, Lord, at your bidding, I will let down my net. And as I let down, I want to live where I, when I begin to tug on the net,
I don't care who you're with. That's not fun. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> if you think that's fun, that's sad. <laughs> I like fish. <coughs> and I like catching fish. That's where I want to be. So my pledge is, and my prayer is, and my prayer has been, even the last few weeks as I've walked around Jordan, I, I've prayed. And I was praying as I was for this time as I was coming here. And it, it has been my prayer. God, show me. Where do I need to let down my net on the other side? Where is it that I have been resistive and not adventurous spiritually enough to, to follow you? Because, Lord, I want to live where you want me to live. And so I pray, and as I've walked around Jordan, and as I've walked around Bethlehem, I'm praying, God, Help me to be ready to let down my net. Because when I feel the tug and I'm pulling in, then when I feel the abundance. Blessing. That's what I want. I don't want to fish all night and catch nothing. I want an abundance of here. So where did you hear the voice of God? Where might God be asking you? go different. Where do you need to cast your bread upon the water? What changes do you need to be making? And please don't sit there and fish all night and be content night after night to catch nothing. But you know that's where a lot of us sit. That's where a lot of us spend our life. Night after night catching nothing and we keep wondering God where are you going to show up? And God keeps saying let down the net on the other side. I want to let down the net on the other side. I want to be a risk taker. I want to be adventurous for the kingdom of God. Tell you what, you get cancer. You hear those words, cancer. <laughs> I used to worry what people think. I don't worry anymore. <laughs> I may not be wrong long enough to care. I remember cancer came along and I, I had the decision to make. I said, Lord, I don't want cancer to be the thing that rules my life. I want you to rule my life, your agenda. I don't want cancer's agenda for my life. I want your agenda. And then my pledge has been, it continues to be, and let me close with it one more time, as God directs and enables, I pledge to live a more spiritually adventurous life by His grace and take sanctified risk for His glory. What steps of faith is God has for you to take in your life right now? the dominant on the other side. Let's pray. Right where you are as God is talking, maybe you need to make your own pledge. Change, be different, maybe you just move out of your comfort zone if you just uh, be willing to do things differently. It might be how you treat people, it might be how you're acting, it might be your prayer life, it might be your devotional life. I don't know what it is, but what where right now might God be speaking to you? And you are just now in this moment say, Lord, help me God to let down my head. Lord, we, Jesus, I thank you that you are the life changer. I thank you that you change situations, you change lives, you change futures. You, and Lord, you, you, the redemptive, we deal with the past. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Lord, I thank you for the power and word and that God has you spoken. You said it will go forth and accomplish your purpose. And I pray that God, even now, it has been dropped into hearts and lives and minds and situations. I pray for the Lord of harvest, fruit to come out of it. 
your harvest, your the results you want. Lord, as you're again speaking individually to people, and it's totally different in every person and every heart. Because God, you are directing, and we pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, that God's decisions are being made, as Lord courses are being changed, as, as new directions, Lord, as people are going to venture off from the shoreline that God they've been hugging to. And Lord, they're going to go out into new areas and new situations. I pray for your Holy Spirit, God, to, to just reaffirm, God, your presence. To reaffirm, Lord Jesus, right now, your protection. To reaffirm, Lord Jesus, as they commit the future and more the results to you. Lord, we, we love you and we thank you that, God, we are going forth in your love, in your care, in your power, but more importantly, to fulfill your purpose. The disciples thought it, but it was their plan. God, you had a total different plan for that night. And thank you, Lord, with the beginning of dawn came a whole new revelation. And I thank you, Lord, for the new things you're going to do in people's hearts and lives as they venture off for you right now. Lord Jesus, we just pray your hand upon this church. Lord, I'm excited for what you are doing. But Lord, it might be that you were speaking even to this church about new things. Maybe it is something totally different that you've dropped into somebody's heart about. Lord, maybe there's a, a people group. Maybe there's a, a, an opportunity that has been missed, missed in this community, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will use this church to its fullest for your glory and your honor. I pray that this church will not be a church that is not willing to take risk, that is, Lord, not just content to to play in the safe zone. But God, that they will venture out into the deep. And Lord, at your bidding to let down the net and watch what you are going to do. We pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. And Lord, I want to pray right now for Bell Plain in the Jordan. I pray for Rick, Mike, Matt, Sarah. What do you think of others? And I pray that God, as they represent these communities, Lord Jesus, that you will begin to move in a mighty way. And I pray that you will send the fire, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this church that God has joined me in the possibility of what you want to do. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice. Help us, Lord Jesus, God, to accomplish what you want. We pray this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Everybody said, Amen. God, a blessing on you. Have a great Sunday. Let's go out into the darkness and be light, okay? Amen. God's blessing on you.